Michael. I'm a detective. Are you now? Yes, I solved a mystery this week. And what what did you what was the mystery? I've been so excited to talk to you about this. Oh yes, you did mention this the other day. Yeah, yeah we okay. were hanging out the other day, and I told you something incredible happened. And then I told you I'm not going to tell you what it was cause because I had to wait. You wanted to preserve the surprise for the for the pod. Yes. So welcome to the weekly undertaking. Yeah. Prepare to be amazed. I'm Mike, and detective man is Alex. I'm detective Alex. You may refer to me as only that. <laughs> Okay, all right, so yes. what is what is what is this mystery? Oh, and I'm feeling a lot better, by the way. Thank you for asking. Yeah, I didn't care. Uh, from last I... week. <laughs> so, let's see. Wednesday morning, I awake. The most, sus- the most suspicious of all mornings. Oh, this is going to, yes, this is going to be a decently long story, so I apologize for that. Oh, no, don't I, apologize. I, I, thank you. I awake, uh, and I get dressed for work, because I have to go to work, and I put on, like, my clothes, and I go to the bathroom, you know, I jog over there. You jog? Yeah. That's a rather healthy way. That's yeah, it's five feet. You getting know, your exercise nice... in. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I go in, I brush my teeth, use the restroom, and I shave. Um, Please be more detailed. That's, well, it, 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 it's, it's world building. <laughs> okay, okay. That's, which is what we're doing today anyway. That, so. that is true. Yeah. Uh, All right, I, do, I finish that, and I step out of the bathroom, and I go downstairs, and I look at my shoe, and there's just a big white blob on it. And I go, what, what? the hell? So I... I, I what, what do you mean a white blob? I initially assumed it was shaving cream. Okay. And I just somehow used too much and it fell on my foot. All but right. I lifted, uh, I took some off and I sniffed it and it was lotion. It was straight up lotion. So I was like, that's... This is in your house. Like, yes. In your bathroom. So I was like, that's weird. So I went to work and forgot about it. Until the next morning. When I woke up, I got dressed... I showered. No, I didn't shower. I shaved. <laughs> I showered at night. Nice. I shaved. I brushed my teeth. I stepped out of the bathroom. I looked down. It's the same blotch on my shoe again. On the same shoe, same size, same DC. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? You have a home invader that lives in your closet and only comes out just to squirt yeah, lotion. At first, I thought I was being like haunted by the ghost of healthy skincare. <laughs> like, I don't know. So uh, the I'm... best of all ghosts, by the way. I'm, oh I'm yeah, my dad. No, my his... hands have never been this soft. Yeah, his masks are incredible. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I ponder this all the way to work, and then I forget about it again. Of course. So Friday comes around, mm-hmm. and I kind of forget about it uh, again. So you know, I go in, I do the same routine. Mm-hmm. I walk downstairs. I'm about to step out the door. My foot feels a little wet. I look down, fucking again. How did you not notice the lotion on your shoe? It seeped through slowly. Oh, So I then see. it touched my sock, and I was like, what's that? So are you sleep lotioning your shoes? That, uh, I, I was trying to figure out any solution at this point. Okay. So I, I figured I was running a few minutes early, so I decided to go into my bathroom and investigate. Okay. So I put on my detective cap. Sorry, my metaphorical detective cap. Uh, I was. I mean, you have a lot of fun caps, so it wouldn't surprise me well, if you thank had you. a... Well, actually, I only have two, my... Oxymoron top hat and my incognito hat. You have an incognito hat? Yeah, I use it to hide because I never wear hats, so when I wear a hat in public, no one recognizes me. Oh, so it's like in the Avengers when the only disguise they wear is a baseball hat and sunglasses? Yeah, I'm like the Clark Kent of uh, <laughs> of just this world. Of this world. No one recognizes me. <laughs> anyway. I've only had to pull it out like twice. Yeah, I... <laughs> So what, like when you're invading a party that you weren't invited to or anything like that? It's a long story, but it's not a part of this story. I, I want to hear that story another day. Absolutely. Okay. So I go to the bathroom, and I look around, and I notice uh, right by the f- foot of the sink, there's just a little blotch of lotion there as well. So I go, okay. Clue. <laughs> you know? <laughs> there's a clue. It missed the shoe. <laughs> yes. So I, I kneel down and I, I like I rub my hand on the floor and lift it up and look at it like a detective does. I, I like a detective looks at dust on a crime. Yeah, scene. it's like what does it mean? <laughs> and then I notice the sink door, like the doors underneath the sink. Yes. That like you you see the sink innards and use for storage. The sink innards. Yes. Is that what that's the, called? I don't know. The plumbing. Is that <laughs> the word you were looking for? Well, I'm I'm really interested. I'm really invested in this story. I don't have time for I'm, words. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I noticed the right door is open a little bit. Okay. And I open it, and I mystery was immediately solved. So what what had, what had happened was there was a lotion bottle in there for storage, but it somehow had gotten knocked over, and uh, like it's the one that you push down on the top and lotion comes out of it. Mm-hmm. So the so the little head fell facing down uh, over the floor, but then the door closed oh. on it softly. So when you so when I go to shave. I lean 
against the door and it squirts lotion onto my foot. <laughs> and it happened for three days in a row. That is the, oh, that's like, a, that's the most Scooby-Doo kind of solution to the I story. I could not believe just how insane the whole setup was. I was like, oh my God, this is like a stupid prank that I did to myself. I will be honest. My first thought was that your dad was sneaking in and, and putting lotion on your shoe. Well, was day. he like army crawling and just like squirt, squirt? Yeah, that wouldn't surprise and then, me. Like, actually. crawling out. Me neither, actually. <laughs> Not in the least. Wow. Uh, I so, <laughs> I, honestly, I like the idea of uh, the ghost of skincare. That, yeah. That, that's a much better uh, conclusion. You to have that. a clean right shoe if it's the last thing I ever do. Yeah. I'm... Uh, yeah. yeah. And now it's just so mundane. It's just, you know, some... Mystery solved. Nothing. Yeah. My house isn't haunted. That's too bad. It's a shame, really. We could have sold tickets <laughs> to enter into this place. Yeah. It, it's a shame, but I just... It's the fu- it's the fucking funniest thing. That is actually really... It's very perfect. It has to fall in a very specific way. I could not believe. Like, shit like that never happens. At all. So when it did, I was like, well, I got my story. You know, you need to call it quits. That, yeah. That's so... That's very... And very you know perfect. what? Even with that story, these first six minutes are better than the whole forty minutes of our last episode. Let's let's not let's not talk about how terrible <laughs> that it, episode. It was. wasn't that bad. All right. I don't think it was that bad. I re-listened. It wasn't bad. All right. And well, if you're here, you probably listened to it and decided to come back. So I, that's that's a very hopeful I- uh, idea. Yeah. yeah. So was that the most interesting part of your week? Uh. One of the most interesting parts. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another thing I did, of course, was our weekly undertaking. Oh, yes, we did. But You're... before I get into that, I so selfishly forgot to ask how your week was. Uh, my week was busy. Very, very busy. Um, because I mentioned on this podcast before, I'm in grad school and things started picking up. My summary of the week... We, okay, so... We went out to a roller skating rink. Yeah, last night. It was we, so fun. It was a lot of fun. And there was a small arcade attached to, like, attached to the roller skating rink. I'm surprised you're going for this story. Uh, just, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hear you out. Okay. So <laughs> my week can be summed up by this, this moment. <laughs> oh, so yeah. So I was playing. There was a skee-ball machine. So naturally, I wanted to play skee-ball. Of course. So... Uh, I, I put my quarters in, and I the, the ski balls come down, and I start ski balling. Um, and everyone else is just watching you. Yeah, it was just watching me ski ball, and I but I was having fun. Now, the thing about roller skating rinks is that they're frequented by children. Oh, so many kids. They're like little obstacles. <laughs> yeah, and I knocked into a few of them and pushed <laughs> them over a couple of times. I'm not very coordinated. But regardless, my, so I was ski balling, and then this, this little kid comes over, and just picks up a ski ball, and I look at him, and he looks at me, and he starts to put it down. I'm like, no, go ahead, here, take my ski ball, and he he throws my last three of nine ski balls. <laughs> he just throws three he, of them. He throws three of them, and he did great. He got three thousand and four thousand. Yeah, and I was like, oh, dude, awesome! And I gave, uh, put him up for a high five. And he wasn't looking at you. No, he just he just let me hanging. He just like <laughs> looked at it and walked away. And I was just like, dude, how this little bastard, <laughs> this little bastard had the nerve to steal a third of my ski balls and, then, and leave. then leave me hanging. Well, then once you got up, he he started playing another round. I mean, good for him. Yeah, he probably did great. But like, also. Man, you don't mess with a man's ski balls. It was, that was incredible. I yes. hated every. That was that was a good summation of just your life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. It really was. So that was that was my that was, in in a nutshell, that was my week. I oh, love man. it. So yeah. Um, what was our challenge? <laughs> That's a good question, my friend. What was our challenge, Alex? We were tasked by ourselves. To uh, write, draw, or just in overall conceive a fantasy world or sci-fi world, as you mentioned last week as well, is okay. fine. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, whatever. Yeah. And uh, I saw that you did that, which I, is good. I did do that. Do you want to go first or shall I? I'll go first, since <laughs> mine probably will have less substance, considering <laughs> okay. I was going to work on it this morning and then proceeded to forget. Oh my God. So I have a small paragraph and a drawing. So okay, I'll, I'll sh- take it. Actually, what's the name of it? Ah, uh, Talamor is the name of my fantasy world. Okay, I saw that it was subtitled The Golden Land. The Golden Land, and there's a reason for that. So here's a drawing. He's pulling up a drawing. Yes, and if you're watching this on YouTube, bam, there's there's an actual drawing of it. Oh, that's actually... It, it has a lot of fantasy aesthetic right here. Yes, so 
let me describe to you. It's a giant ovular uh, area completely surrounded by mountains on every side that are impossible to scale for the people living inside and for whatever lives outside. Oh, so it's a very entrapped area. Yes, it's huge. The lake in the center of uh, this area is so big that a lot of the people who lived there thought it was a, was a was a sea for a long time. Okay. So that just I, so I want to give the, a little scale. What's it's, the scale model of this? Like how like what's the diameter of the uh, of Talonmore? Uh let's see. I'd say the lake in the middle, which okay. I've forgotten to name. I'd say it's about the size of the Medi- Mediterranean Sea. Oh, if, yeah. That's huge. Yes. Oh, it's freaking huge. And okay, then surrounding great. that is just a huge donut of land on all sides yeah. that go on for miles, surrounded by forests, and then eventually you'll get to the mountainside. So is it like, so this is the entirety of the, you just didn't want to draw a globe, so you just... Yes, so okay. I, I created a, a place where everyone who lives inside thinks they're the only people in the world, and the entire rest of the world is does not know of their existence. Because they live in the middle of an unscalable mountain range. Yes, okay. and... Ideally, this is like a more fantasy type world where there's no like cellular devices or technology that's too advanced yet. It's way too advanced. Okay. Yes. And now Talamore is very similar to our world except for two huge differences. Okay. The first difference is uh, coal is incredibly rare. Okay, so they don't have fossil fuels. There is, yeah, almost How, So is their, is their carbon footprint very small? Uh, almost they have, non-existent. They, so they don't have gasoline or, or uh, anything else? No, they burn wood. Good for them. Um, but another thing... Do that, they have solar energy? They're not there yet. Wind power? It's a very dark world. Oh. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's, it's like Alaska where it's just bright for like two hours of the day <laughs> and then dark the rest of the night. Like... But, but the other big uh, difference, and uh, the reason it's called the Golden Land, mm-hmm. is that the mountain ranges are abundant in gold. Really? There's an insane amount of gold. The mountains have are a yellowish color from a distance. So almost all of their buildings, uh, armor, co- uh, clothing, their teeth replacements are all made out of gold. Mm-hmm. So it's just everyone has gold everywhere, and it's worthless. So is it... Do they use it for anything, or is it literally pointless? No, gold is very versatile as a material. Okay. We just don't use it for shit, because there's so little of it, or (laughs) so little of it, that... Right, and we also decided that the shiny means it's worth money. Yeah, so basically no one, like, is gonna, like, make a house out of gold. Right. But... Well, I mean, kings do. Well, yeah. Have you ever been to Versailles? No, actually. I've never been to France. You've never been to... Oh, no, you went to Italy. I'm sorry, I forget. I forget. They're, They're... Near each other. Yes, so very I, different places. They border each other, Okay, but, you know, <laughs> they're close. But basically the idea is that these little villages are built of stone and then covered in gold plating. So mm-hmm. you have, like, these, like, very poor residencies that are just shiny and gold. Mm-hmm. And then there are castles on uh, parts of the region that are just made of stone with, like, coal, like, uh, like highlights instead mm-hmm. of gold. Just to show, like, royalty, so it's all black and gray. So there's a really... So black and gray is the royalty colors, not gold. And gold is a symbol of commonality. Ooh, that's really interesting. So it's a fun little difference, and I always thought it would be cool to start, like, make a lore where it's like there was a god of gold who got jealous of the coal god who was everywhere, so he set fire to the land, burning anew, turning all the coal to... Gold or whatever, I don't know. And cool. <laughs> All right. So well, is it so? Is it just one nation in Talamore, or is it like several there warring? There are three smallish kingdoms. Okay. Uh, all three are aware of the other's existence, and mm-hmm. they're divided pretty evenly among the lake. Uh, the biggest is this one in the center. I also didn't fucking name anything because I was going to do that wh- today. Because why would you? Yeah. yeah, of course. Sorry. <laughs> but they're a very militarized area. They keep their uh, armies in this little polka dot area right here mm-hmm. near a forest. Uh, they have a lot of farmland, but it's mostly uh, civilization and a lot of people. Okay. And then you have the bottom down here. Uh, a lot of same, but it's more farm area. It has a path through leading directly to the army camp of the other uh, civilization, which they built to ambush them. So Kingdom 1. Kingdom 1 is, is nearby Kingdom 2 and has this... this, ca- this... They're on the other side of, of this lake, okay. but they've provided a route direct 
directly to the other kingdom to mm-hmm. sort of subtly control them, being like, we have the giant army, and we have a path right to you. And a fuck ton of coal. Yes. I would say Kingdom 1 has the most coal. Kingdom I, 1 has the most coal. I, I would definitely say. Okay. There's a desert here on the bottom right near the third kingdom. Oh, so you have all of the biomes? Is that what I'm yeah, thinking of? Like yeah, a biome. A, a nice biome. It's like a little little globe little that biosphere. is in the globe. yeah. You have this giant mountain here that would be for climactic battles that in stories that would take place in this world. Well, but you can't climb the mountain, or can you? Well, that could be a goal. Okay. Of of little... So is it all humans in here, or is it... A lot of humans. Great. Can't think of any other Great. races. <laughs> no dwarves, no elves, no nothing? Okay, yeah, no. What I'm saying is, <laughs> I made the drawing, <laughs> and I came up with the concept. Do you have magic in this world? I'd say yes. Cool. Light magic. Light magic? Light magic. Like, like as in Gandalf are, coming in but not really like using much there's magic? there's alchemy, but it's not impressive since gold is so common already. So, <laughs> so what kind of things do the alchemists do? They make more gold. They make more gold. <laughs> it's Imagine if like you brought someone like five bucks and they made you a rock. That's actually really funny. Actually, I can uh, I can imagine that. Hey, do your thing. Just like he, my only Bam. my only superpower is I can make as many pennies as I want. <laughs> like that, that's all I got. Yeah, but I need the equal amount of currency in exchange. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It costs me five dollars to make five hundred five hundred pennies. Yeah, that's that's some quick maths <laughs> yes. for you there, buddy. And it's not a very ag- agriculturally. Uh, advanced region i'd say only a few uh different crops and a few types of animals Mm -hmm. they took precautions to make sure that uh species didn't run out because if their their area dies out then they're all gonna die or resort to cannibalism which would also be an interesting story that could be part of the lore where maybe one day all the animals died and people started eating each other until a wizard turned a few humans into pigs and then we started eating them and breeding them just wow, off you the top of my story. head, I yeah, don't know. You got a really good story there. Yeah. yeah. Basically, my idea was to set a foundation of lore to build upon if I wanted to continue and make more stories. And will you do that? No, nah, probably not. Probably not? Okay, cool. I don't know. We have other undertakings to do. We, we do have other undertakings to do. I just, I'm going to press you a little bit more on Talamore no, here. No, that's fair. Um, You mentioned that there are worlds outside of Talamore. Yes. So, what's up with them? Well, I wouldn't know. Talamores don't know. Telemorians. Yeah, but you're you're the you're the creator of this world. Yeah. Do they have any inkling that Talamore is there? You said they burn wood. Do they see smoke? The mountains are very tall, Michael. Okay. All right. I don't. Maybe. So what? I feel it just like I'm being. The I feel like I'm being interrogated. Well, I mean, come on. I, I'm just trying to understand oh, you know what? more Here, about your world. I'll, I'll tell you what. Okay. Here, here's what happens. Okay. The people around uh, Talamore, who okay. would just call it like the Forbidden Mountains, mm-hmm. would see. Uh, the smoke would mix with the clouds and create black, like, sort of uh, clouds over, around the mountains. Mm-hmm. And uh, people would tell stories about the Golden Mountains, who would basically it'd sort of be like a religious thing, where it's like, here's God's temptation, but if you go there, you are to die. That's the symbol of the smoky clouds. Ooh. Okay. Uh, I think... I made that shit up on the spot, that's bro. That's some pretty damn... Good shit, man. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. Sweet. It's better than the religion for dogs idea that I had. You, it's, I'm sorry. It's what? called puppism, and it will catch on. <laughs> should, should I bother president? Nope. Okay, cool. All right. That might be an idea we explore later. I want to learn more about puppism when the time comes. <laughs> should we move on? Or yeah, you, you want... tell me about yours, then we can go back and forth. Okay, Uh. well, I... You did a lot. One of the things that's interesting about world building is that most of the time when you're writing, it comes naturally from your writing. Of course. Um, so the fact that we are doing this in a vacuum without a story yes. kind of made it more difficult for me. Mm-hmm. Most stories, uh, the world is built around the central conflict of the protagonist to yes. better suit that story. Right, exactly. And sure, I don't know if... I mean, Tolkien's world is just so detailed that I wonder if it's... In- I would imagine the concept, like the general concept came first, and then it's like, oh, well, why is the ring so powerful? Let me uh, create a whole backstory to that, and that led to Morador, and then he needed a world around it. And well, just... I mean, it originally started just because he wanted to write stories for his son in World War One. Or That I did not know. I mean, I might be getting that mixed up with 
that you Lewis. might not know. I might be getting, I might be getting that mixed up with C.S. Lewis, but I'm pretty sure that was Tolkien that that was his his motivation. Wow. Um. So it was. I mean, he he clearly invented he invented a freaking language for this thing. Yeah. So world building is kind of like the the OG uh, extended expanded cinematic universe uh, yeah. idea, where it's like you can create a world where many different stories can be told under the same rooftop of a world. And mm-hmm. that's always interesting, because then it's like, wow, this is happening as the same time as that other thing that's happening. Yeah. And that's very interesting. Exactly. Um, so one thing that I noticed as I was building this is I have a lot of shit going on uh, <laughs> that I don't really know how it's gonna go this is kind of um Did you take a complex approach to it yeah it's it's mine is literally a world building i dig it not necessarily a kingdom or a, a culture it's more of a world you ba- made a world and assigned uh, areas and uh, general descript- descriptions for those worlds i would imagine exactly um it was kind of inspired a little bit by old man logan um, do you know the anything about Old Man Logan? Let's pretend that the person listening doesn't understand, so you'd have to explain it. Right. Not you, because you know everything about the I, thing. Michael, you could just stop that sentence after you know everything. Yeah, of course. Because it's I'm true. Sorry. I I'm do sorry. Know. I apologize. I know everything. Um, Old Man Logan was the inspiration for the uh, film Logan, but it was it's a bit different. Logan is... A beautiful film. It was a beautiful film, yeah. Of course, yeah. If you haven't seen it, you should. Mm -hmm. But um, Old Man Logan, the concept is an alternate universe. An alternate universe, yeah. In in the future. Mm Mm-hmm. In Uh, which... Like I knew. In which the... Here, the villains have taken over. They take it over. Of course. Of course, yeah. They've taken over America. So it's like Logan, Wolverine, um, has to, as an old man, go through... Venture through all these different post-apocalyptic kind of worlds... To defeat you know, the Red Skull and Bullseye and the Hulk because the Hulk goes crazy from the gamma radiation, I dig it. becomes a cannibal and stuff like that. It's kind of gory. It's very gory. It's a very gory comic. But Mike, I know. Yeah, I know that you know. I'm talking to the hypothetical person that maybe yes. isn't as well versed in Marvel's alternate universe. And there's no need to be ashamed because you're tall and handsome and people like you. Uh, this is getting more and more specific as we go on. I don't know, listener. I don't know. You don't need everyone to appreciate you. You can just love yourself and move on in this great world. It's actually some pretty solid advice. Yeah. Don't worry, Alex. Everything's going to be fine. Oh, wow. Okay, crap. All right. <laughs> <laughs> just get... Just, just totally abandon everything in this podcast and just support myself. Just support in you. In the future. Alex. <laughs> A future Alex editing this. <laughs> you, are, you are valid and you are good. Yes. Um... But yeah, so it was kind of based around that the post apocalyptic world with all these um fucked oppressive up fucked up oppressive regimes. Um but I based mine kind of around mythology. Oh. Because I'm very in I, I very interested in that. I don't know as many stories as I wish I did. We did a whole episode where you talked about Irish mythology. I did. I didn't I included a little bit of that in here, but not a not a hell of a lot. Um so mine is gonna this is gonna sound edgy, but in this world Every apocalypse myth happens at the same time. I love it. Okay. And this is kind of the world that, that is that is created comes from that. So you're playing off of events that have happened in the real world or not the real world like other Oh, you're just like just every apocalyptic event in this world happens at the same time. Right. So like the Book of Revelation happens at the same time as Ragnarok happens at the same time as nuclear nuclear holocaust. So it's all like mythology, myth, mythological uh, all of the apocalypse. All of the stories that ha- that we have come to know from either different cultures or from our own fantasy world of like you know, uh, I have a world in here that's inspired by 1984 and Big Brother and the robots, oppressive regime, and Terminator and stuff like okay. that. So all of that exists in this world. Okay, cool. So um. Yeah, I – there's a – like I said, there's a lot happening. So I uh, – Well, walk I, me through it. Okay. So Angels of Death. Yes. In the the Book of Revelation has the um, the four angels of – four horsemen of the apocalypse. I personally prefer the devils of life, but please continue. And also the seven angels that dump um, 
liquid into the various different things to curse the world. So right. for I, I forget all of them, but for example, one pours a, a liquid into the oceans and turns them to blood. Another pours a liquid into the Euphrates River, and the Euphrates River dries up. And um, an- another pours one that spawns the Beast, capital B Beast. B Beast. Which, I will say, the Book of Revelation is, you know... It's cool and all, but it also is very inconsistent because it says that there's the beast, capital B, but it references two different beasts and a dragon, and also the dragon is the devil. So there's a, so I included three beasts just to cover all my bases. <laughs> yeah, just just throw another one in there. Just throw another one in there. So um, well, first of all, the four horsemen have split the have split um, uh, a, a big chunk of area into four different kingdoms: the kingdom of famine, pestilence, war, and death. Wow, so you literally named them after tragedy, or not tragedies, but like the, bad it, things. I well, guess. no, the the names of the horsemen of death. Okay, that, that's what they that's what they're named. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, you you got it. You you're doing good today. We'll just call Alex. the this episode the episode of things Alex already knew. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, each horseman is the king of the of their respective kingdoms. Obviously, this is not directly related to the Christian. The Book of Revelation. I took some liberties. You're taking some foundation off of existing. Some myths. very, very vague inspiration. You know what I mean? Yeah, and now you're you made something new out of it. Yeah, exactly. If if this was a copyright fair use law, you'd be not breaking the law. Oh, that's that's true. a call back to last week. Please don't don't listen to it. <laughs> Skip that part. Um, but they are all kind of together and fighting against the 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 uh the beasts and the devils and the devil's followers. Wow. Uh, who are uh, like immediately south of them and then there's they in in this world it so i also in my mind i have each of these kingdoms being some kind of oppression so in in the so let's call them the celestial states of the angels of death um that that's based around you know oppressive kings and and things like that like a very stringent society because mm-hmm. ultimately um you know they they in this world, while they are awful, they they do come from God as the punish or from wherever as punishment for the wicked. Cool. So it's very much based on that. Whereas the the devils and the beasts live in the equivalent of hell in the in this place. So they're kind of clashing in the Paradise Lost sort of sort of way. Huh. Um, and yeah, I also have Ragnarok and the Kingdom of the Ice Giants taking over most of what was the Himalayas um, and things cool, like that. Cool. Um, oh, so this is this is literally a world that's has a similar map to our world. Similar, but not exact. Yeah, I see. I see an Africa shape, and it's ve- it's very vague. I see what you mean, though. Okay, yeah, okay. it's very very vague. Um, so yeah, I mean, because you can see that I did not bother drawing Australia or New Zealand or any uh, <laughs> or any islands whatsoever, because that was those were Small details. details. Yeah, you know. Why? Yeah, <laughs> um, they 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 take work, Alex, and I don't have that. Mike, work. neither of us have a lot of time anymore. Yeah, so um, yeah, so that's kind of what what that is. I have a world based around um the Fey, which are which is the Celtic myth of the um of fairies and and their kind of life. Cool. Um, so yeah, they go ham on their rules because they have a lot of real weird. In Irish myths, they have a lot of very weird rules when it comes to um, uh, how should I put this? Um, lying and ways of speech and ways of, and mannerisms and things like that. Like you're not allowed to lie, but you're allowed to tell um, subtle truths that can mislead them into concluding things. Like I'm trying to think. I can't think of an example offhand. No, I do that to my friends all the time. You do? Yeah. Oh, great. Not gonna go go any further into that. Just of gonna, course not. You gotta, you gotta let's just leave it at leave that. Leave it up to speculation. Make yeah. everyone uh, reconsider everything I've yeah. ever said in my entire life. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. But um, yeah. So I just kind of went ham on all on all of that. I put in. I did put in a little bit of hope. I put in a sanctum of a nation where the few thousand humans remaining that survived every apocalypse <laughs> that could have possibly happened. They just hang out there. They just hang out there. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah. I actually have. Uh, I just saw an area I'm genuinely interested to hear about. What's this one in the top right corner? The Golden Sea that's right next to the Sanctum. Oh, that is a sea. 
Well, why is it called the Golden Sea? Um, because it sounded cool. Because everyone pees in it? No, no that's not <laughs> <laughs> that was not my intention. Okay. No, my my logic was I need some kind of natural barrier in between the sanctum and the kingdom of pestilence and like the celestial states, as I said before, yep. to justify why those people haven't invaded the sanctum. Okay. So I put in a sea there and I was just like, what's a cool thing to call it? The, the golden, golden sea. sea. Let's let's throw that out there. Um, right, well, finish your description because I have a fun idea. Okay, cool. Um, so I'll flip to the other side. There's, As you can see, there's a huge ocean separating kind of two vague continents. Um, and on the other side is the Big Brother-esque thing that I called – I don't even know how to pronounce this because I based it off of a Latin word. Oh, I do that too it's with, called with words like that. Fraternati, which is – which I think – is how you pronounce the Latin word for brotherhood, um, because it's kind of the the old uber communist state um, nice. and things like that. <laughs> so I mean, Big Brother, um, and then uh, we have Skinwalker Canyon, which I don't know if I have I ever mentioned the Skinwalkers before. Uh, no. They're one of my favorite monsters in all of mythology across anything. Tell me about them. They are uh, they're a Navajo creature, um, and they are depending on the different translations, they are either witches or demons, semi-immortal in, in both cases, that can shapeshift into any creature, and basically they, they're, they hunger for human flesh. So nice. they're badass. They they run everything. They're in their natural form. They're like eight feet tall and very skinny and stuff like that. That sounds right for something called the skinwalker. The skinwalker. Well, that's the translation. The skinwalker, because it changes skins, it walks through skins. Yeah, it sounds just even yeah. creepier. Just, just well, in general. The um, the original Navajo word for it, I is spell is spelled, N A A L D L O O S H I I. Not even going to try. I think it's pronounced Nadloshi. I think that's how it's pronounced. Wow, that's not bad. I probably butchered it entirely. I am not. <laughs> I am not basing that off of any research. But they are badass, and I also gave th uh, gave them bordering the land of the Wendigo. Uh, which is another Native American uh, folk uh, mytholo mythological creature that's more or less the spirit of cannibalism. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's even taller than 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 the Skinwalker, and it um it's emaciated, looks like a skeleton, is pure white, and drives people insane to the point of uh, of cannibalism. Love it. So it's it. So yeah, um, I'm going. I was planning on doing more research and learning about more mythology, but. Uh, just because that's a cool thing, and I lo want any, I love any excuse to uh, research that. So, of yeah. course. Um, yeah, that's the main points of that. Nice. I think that I want to. I, I have, bring I up. have a question. Sure. Uh, is there any area specifically, or is there is the whole world like sort of defined by uh, the trait of greed at all? There is not. Do you want to throw that in there? I would. I because I have another idea that I think would be cool. Okay. So, can we just alter a little bit? To say that there are a lot of people in the world driven by greed and others' deadly sins. I mean, I would say so. It's the post-apocalypse. Theoretically, yeah. Yeah, sure. Because I thought it would be a cool idea um, to sort of merge our two worlds. Oh, and give – I'm sorry. What's it called? A Talamore. Talamore. Well, give Talamore a, a home inside of your – apocalyptic world oh give it like a like an actual thing of hope and here's what here's the idea i'm having yeah uh take the sanctum and the golden sea combine them into one big area mm -hmm. talamore becomes an island in the middle of it gold falls Ooh. into the water making it actually golden people would look at the uh mountains and clouds and take it as an omen from god like do not come here you will die but greedy people try to cross the ocean and climb the mountains and fail on the inside, you have a bunch of people who are just ignorant to this world. <laughs> just completely oblivious to the who nuclear are fallout. Just and dressed all that. in gold, <laughs> not realizing how much everyone else wants what they have. And just like so lost, like no coal, very uh, like there's plenty of food. It's not a paradise, but it's no hell. It's just like everyone's just living. Alex, I think that is one of the best ideas you've had in a very great. long time. High five. Yeah. I will take that as an offense because I don't think that's a great <laughs> idea. But No, I think that's really – I really actually really do like that because it gives a specific world to whatever the hell this mish mishmash of different things I like is. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> what I like. Yeah, this is just things that I find interesting. Dude, I'm going to I'm gonna fucking 
draw up like a conjoined map that and use it as the thumbnail of our of this video. That would be really cool. So yeah. excellent. Leave that here if you don't mind. I'm, or I'm I'll not take taking a picture it. of it. I am not taking it. You so, got it. It's all cool. yours. Um, that's really awesome. I think that would just be like a fun little because. Yeah. I wanted to do more, mm -hmm. but you did a lot of work. I did. So I'll just throw mine Argu onto yours. Arguably, I did too much. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, so, I would love that. That that works very well. Great, and now we'll have a world. So if we ever yeah. want to make a fantasy story about absolute hell and torture <laughs> or, or mundane golden life, yeah, we have two areas of this world that we can look upon. Absolutely. Huzzah. Yeah, we did it. Great. Yeah, do you ever think about, like, living in one of the... Did you think about living in Talamore personally? Yeah, you know, I thought it would be fun. Mm -hmm. Not in a way that's like... Because, you know, living there, it's not like... You feel like you're not special. Right. Because, like, it's like... I mean, we're the only people in this world, like, in that thought process. But even with that mindset, the world is huge. Mm-hmm. And everyone just has – it's like just a regular medieval world to their knowledge. Mm -hmm. Where it's just like the rich have the coal, the poor have the gold, and, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. So right. let's just live our best life. Mm -hmm. You know, you get golden swords and they bend and break e easily because gold's not a good weapon. It's not a good weapon. I don't even know if it is a good building material. It's very malleable, mm -hmm. which makes it good for plating. Like, you can, like, mm. bend it over structures, and it would uh, stop, like, rain damage and water okay. from coming in. So it's a good covering. Right. But with, like, a stone foundation. Right. So that would be That would be very it. cool. And then, you know, having farming tools made of gold and stuff like that would be fine. That would be. So, yeah. Have you ever... I feel like this is a very middle school conversation, but have you ever thought about what you would do in the zombie apocalypse? You know what? That is a good middle school question. And partially, what I thought I would do is just die. <laughs> well, I don't that's think the I'd real be, answer. I don't think I'd be good in a situation like that. I definitely would not. I mean, like, I feel like... Of course you imagine yourself being badass and kicking ass. Yeah, being part of the 0.01% who does not die. And somehow escapes on every turn. And, Hell no. And does all that stuff. The thing is, I'd have a real moral contemplation about it. Because I'd probably barge myself in for a couple of weeks trying to decide whether... Because like, I know... I wouldn't want to die and become a zombie because, like, there's that 1% chance in my head where it's like, maybe I'll still, like, feel some sort of pain while being undead so well, it's yeah. like i'd want to be full dead but then i'd be like well then i'd have to kill myself and i don't want to do that <laughs> so it's like a whole contemplation i don't want zombies to eat me because i'm sure being eaten alive would suck yeah that seems like an unpleasant experience yeah i don't really want to do that but seriously you got to watch the santa clear to diet Oh, you did tell me about yeah. that. Yeah, I never, I never got around to it. Yeah, we're we're binging it at some point. Cool. Because I've already seen it twice, <laughs> and I love it. You watched the first season twice already. I watched the two seasons twice. Oh, there are two. Yes. Oh, cool. Very good. Sorry, uh, but what would you do in a zombie apocalypse? Despite me not answering your question, you very. I mean, I'll you, come back to it. I think that you. It sounds like. Your answer is I would sit in a corner and huddle and contemplate my own existence. Well, for, I do that anyway. Yeah, it just but there will be zombies. Whether or not I will live, or, but there will be zombies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, depending on where I am, I mean, I think that I've come up with a few different ideas. I just in the moment, you know, I don't know what I would do. It's because not only do you need a shelter that's kind of hard for zombies to get through, you want to go to the high ground for that reason. Yeah. Um, or to the ocean or something like that. But you also need an avenue for food. Yes. Or for regular food. And source. you would also want to get into some sort of team or group, but not big enough so that food becomes impossible and small enough so that it can be mobile that's and true. with people you can really trust. Well, that that's the big question. Who can you really trust in a zombie apocalypse? That's almost like... I would trust you. You would trust me? I mean, I can outrun you. That's all that matters. Uh, that, that is true. <laughs> I think we can both outrun zombies. Unless they're World War Z zombies. Yeah, I would hope not. Yeah. Th th then we'd all die. Yeah. For real. For sure. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely That was not. a good movie. Yeah. Was it World War Z? Yeah. yeah I it was okay. I liked it. It was fun to watch. It was, like, exciting. Yeah. I remember nothing about the main characters, but to be fair, besides The Walking Dead, I never remember anything about the characters. Was it Brad Pitt that was in that movie? Or was it someone It was else? someone beautiful. Yeah. It was, a, I mean, always a very attractive Because obviously person. in Zombie Apocalypse, the, the, the prettiest people survive. Well, yeah, that's also part of the reason. You need to justify your own existence as to why you survived and yeah. not another 99.9% Sad to say, population. I'll probably be the first to go. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> oh, thanks, buddy. I mean, you're not getting a movie based around your survival experience. It's fine. Soon. It probably wouldn't be interesting. I'd probably just play Go Fish until I starve. <laughs> 
<laughs> just try to play go fish with the zombies. <laughs> just like, just like, all right, you got Do you any, have any sevens? <laughs> all right, how many? Uh, any threes? <laughs> All is right, here you yes? go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. The zombie actually is bat is boss at Goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> he like just drops the cards. He's got a perfect flush. I don't know. I haven't played Goldfish in a while. A flush. Do you have a flush in Goldfish? A royal flush is something in poker. Oh, that's it. Goldfish is in poker. No, Mike. Oh, okay. It's, it's poker for children, and for people who don't know how to play poker. Uh, so, so us. So you want to play Goldfish? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've tried to play poker. I can't. I, I just have not learned. I mean, it's a fun time. It's it's. You can't really bet. I don't really actually bet any money. I just bet chips. No. I, what I would have everyone do is bring their own flavor of Pringles, and uh, use that as the currency. Oh, that's off. There are way too many flavors of Pringles. Can we agree on that? We oh, we had this discussion two weeks ago. Did we? We looked at bad Pringles flavors on my phone and listed them off for five minutes. I did not remember that, but that sounds like that something we would do. That was very recent. I, that sounds like something we would do, yeah. Yeah, I'd play the voice clip, but we're recording. Oh, true, we are. Yeah, we are but indeed. what I'm saying is that would be cool. That would be, that would be kind of a, because it's a pun off of chip. Yeah, and yeah, it's different flavors, so the winner gets like a big potluck of flavor. Yeah, absolutely. And the losers get to watch the winner eat. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. All right, should we... Yeah, it's bucket time. Okay, cool. I, this, this one flew by. Yeah, this was fun. I had a lot of fun with this one. Me too. I hope it continues with uh, with whatever is next. What, what do we got? It might not. What is it? So, let me talk to you for a sec about this. To me? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to dangle it above your head for okay. a little while. Uh, a long time ago, okay. like episode nine or eight... We did an episode called Skills That Won't Pay Bills. Oh, where, God. Where we learned uh, to yes. do things that yes. uh, would not potentially help us in the real world. Mike did cup stacking. I did balloon animal makings. It's mm -hmm. still one of my favorite episodes, actually. Okay. So you should go listen to it. Um, and in this bucket... I know I, what this is. Yeah, I was... We decided to start uh, making counter undertakings uh, to previous... Uh, previous episodes and uh they're marked in yellow for us just to be aware so basically uh it's the exact opposite of that challenge and it's called skills that will pay bills much less creative title but considering <laughs> that skills that won't pay bills came first i think you can appreciate it all right all right and well, it. very simply learn a new skill that will help you in life in some way so learn to do taxes learn to learn to do taxes i don't know turbo tax man not sponsored. <laughs> but yeah, no, I uh, learned to do taxes, I guess, okay. Or, Stuff like that. I don't yeah. know. Learn to bake, learn to cook, learn to. We can do a lot of things with this. Just yeah, something I guess that'll you help could. you. I, could, I in, guess in, so. In life. This is a very practical undertaking. Very, very different from its counterpart. It is, indeed. I so, do agree. Uh, this will be fun. Uh, since this one was very. Uh, very like chill, like super creative. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have something that's the complete opposite of that. Very, very practical. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. You know, we gotta. We it has to be a balance. They can't all just be like you know, go find a lollipop and eat it. I would love that challenge. Let's do it. Actually, that's a great challenge. Can we put that in there, dude? We've been getting a lot of really cool ideas recently, yeah, and I'm I'm really excited for our next bucket. Let's get a lollipop challenge. A lollipop hunt. The lust great. For, lust for lollipop. That's the great Lollipop lust. Lollipop lust. Great. Yeah. We could have candy-themed Seven Deadly Sin challenges. Oh, God. So it's like gummy gluttony. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are other <laughs> deadly sins? <laughs> uh, envy. Envy. Uh, uh, you got it. I believe in you. Uh, empanada empathy. Empanada's it's not, a candy. not a candy. It's not a candy. It's not a candy at all. But it's, you it's... just thought of the first thing that, that you could think of that started with the letter E. All right. Uh, egg cream empathy. That's egg... like a. It's is, like a shake. Is that a? Is that a? It's like a shake. Okay. What about sloth? What do you got for sloth? Sloth. Uh, mm... Or wrath. Wrath. Oh, damn it! I'm, I'm disappointed I'm in you. Blanking. Warhead wrath. That's that seems warhead like, wrath. That seems very appropriate. That's great. Yeah. Um, what was the other one? Sloth. Uh, any candy that starts with an S. There are like a billion of them. Swedish fish sloth. No. That's the most or sweet Swedish sloth instead of Swedish fish. <laughs> you want to try that again? Swedish sloth instead of Swedish fish. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that's. I feel like you know you could have gone with Smarties or yeah whatever. Oh yeah. 
I love candy. I just can't remember the names of any of them when I'm under pressure. Just... Oh, and Sweet Tart Sloth. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen um, um, Billy on the Street? Mm-hmm. The, the, You've shown it to me several times. Yeah, it's it's for those of you that don't know, it's Billy Eichner just going on the streets of New York and asking random questions um, to to people in New York. One of my favorite clips is he goes up to a random woman and it's just like, for a dollar, name a woman. And she's just like, what? Name a woman. Name a woman. And it's just her just like <laughs> completely blank, like, I don't know. I don't know. What <laughs> <laughs> and Billy is just storming off angrily. It's so Which she had funny. just had to been like, uh, Jessica. Done. Yeah. <laughs> took took you a second too. Yeah. Yeah. You could, I mean, th- there are there are women. There are several of them. Yeah. There's a woman out there named Jessica. Th- there are indeed. Great. Yeah. Glad we we established that. Hi, Jessica. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> Please never do that voice again. Sorry. All right. Anyway, we went on. Uh, anyway, that's our challenge for next week is learn something. Practical. Practical. Hooray. Yeah, I guess this is that is very much you know what? It's related fine. to the goal of the podcast. Yeah, considering that we're adulting now and, you know, it's, this one kind of. actually will be useful. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's that's probably true. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening to The Weekly Undertaking. Um Please subscribe and give us a, a rate and review because those do really help us with the uh, publicity. Yeah. Tell, tell a friend about us. Yes. Uh, we have several artists that help us throughout the throughout the podcast. <laughs> and their information is in the description. Down below. Down below. It's not funny if we both do it. No, we're not done yet. <laughs> Don't reach for the end button. <laughs> Just to end on that <laughs> awkward silence. <laughs> Uh, maybe one day. Maybe one day we will. <laughs> but um, uh, please uh, follow us on all social medias. And uh, do we have any other announcements that we need to make? No, that's it. All right, great. Um, thank you. Join us next week. Until then, don't forget to challenge yourself. <laughs>